ex-president or former leader Sarkozy has been arrested or has been kept in custody because of some cash case. Investigations are still going on. He was kept in custody and released on Wednesday evening, but he has been asked by the jurisdiction not to leave the country. And so investigations are still going on to get details on this because they said his campaign in 2007 was funded by illegal cash from Libya. On this debate, we're going to get details on that. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to the Pan African Debate on Afric Media TV. So, I have one main topic. As I earlier said, we're going to talk about the situation happening in France between the former leader and the judicial system as he was kept in custody for two days for him to be questioned on the activities which took place during his campaign, which took place in 2007. They said the funding of this campaign was uh, illegally gotten from Libya, and Gaddafi has always claimed that he actually sponsored the election of uh, former leader Sarkozy, but Sarkozy has refused vehemently that Gaddafi never sponsored his campaign. So far, the authorities in France think that they have got enough sufficient uh, results to actually take him to court and proofs to show what uh, Gaddafi was claiming. So on this edition, I have a panel with me. We're going to discuss about that, and you also have the opportunity to call us and give us your views. But to start off this edition today, we're going to first have the press roundup from Clarice Wildoven. She's going to give us the details on each newspaper, things that happen in the African continent. When we come back, I'll present to you my panel, and then we're going to go ahead with the debate. Good day, Clarice. You're welcome to the debate. Thank you so very much, uh, Emanuela Nuke. Uh, good day uh, as well to the Pan-African panel. I will start by sharing the views of uh, one of Africa's president, that is Yoru Savani, who said, Africa has all it takes to grow politically, economically, and what have you. But according to him, uh, what is impeding that growth is the differences in our ideologies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's time for us to make Look at what, look at what making uh, headline news uh, in the papers uh, in the course of the week. And of course, our first paper will be from Nigeria, the Vanguard uh, newspaper, which uh, postulated uh, that uh, President uh, Mamadou Buhari has uh, assured uh, that he will not relent uh, in his effort to ensure the release of the uh, abducted Dapchi uh, girl, beg your pardon, Leah Sherubu, who was not released uh, by the Boko Haram Islamic State because she is a Christian and uh, refused to convert uh, to Islam 104 according to the journal out of the 110 abducted girls from the Dapchi government science and technical school Yoba State where on Wednesday morning released by the abductors five were said to have died while little Miss uh, Sherubert was said to have been held back because uh, she rebuffed her uh, attempt uh, to be converted to Islam. The New Times newspaper of Rwanda recalled uh, that uh, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahamad, uh, on Monday urged uh, African countries to ratify and implement the African Continental Free Trade Area AFCFTA agreement, saying it will fast track the continent's much desired economic growth. Mahamad made the call during the opening of the 18th uh, uh, extraordinary session of the Council of Ministers of the African Union in Kigali, Rwanda's capital city. Let's proceed to Tanzania, where daily newspaper recounted how President John Magafuli called for immediate signing of cooperation agreements between Tanzania and Israel in various sectors, including security, training, and economic issues for implementation to take place instantly, according to a press statement released by the Presidential Communication Directorate President Magufuli made the call after holding talks with Israel's defense, defense minister, Mr. Avigdor Lieberman, who visited him at State House in Dar es Salaam. That was on Thursday. 
Proceeding to Sudan, Sudan Tribunal reported that uh, Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir alluded to legal action against the political parties affiliated with the Sudan Call in Court Alliance for breaching the laws governing political action which prohibit alliance with rebels bearing arms against the state. The journal noted also that uh, the threat comes after al Madi participation in a meeting uh, of the Sudan Core Alliance in Paris, where he was elected as the chairperson of uh, the opposition umbrella, which includes armed groups in Darfur and Sudan's two areas. The Ghanaian Times newspaper cited that uh, Ghana will benefit from Euro European Union's uh, $14 million program to combat uh, drug uh, trafficking in the country. Uh, the governor's adv adviser at the EU, uh, Mr. Sotirios uh, Basikomwe, uh, disclosed uh, this at the opening of a four-day e-learning workshop for 10 uh, security officials in Accra. The workshop aimed at strengthening the capacity of the officials of law enforcement agencies in the fight of transnational organized crimes. Uganda's leading uh, online journal, New Vision, uh, made us to understand uh, that the African continental trade uh, free trade area will promote uh, a dynamic, integrated, and prosperous Africa. Foreign Affairs Minister Sama Kutesa said uh, to a delegate, uh, delegate at the summit in Kigali on Wednesday. Uh, Uganda is one of the countries uh, that signed the landmark free trade agreement uh, area covering over 1.2 billion people and a gross domestic product of $2.5 trillion across 55 states. Delhi Nation, Kenya's online publication, uh, reported uh, that uh, Nigeria's military was on Tuesday accused uh, of ignoring repeated warnings about the movement of Boko Haram fighters before they kidnapped uh, 110 schoolgirls in the country's uh, restive northeast. The students, the youngest of whom is uh, age Justin, were seized uh, from the town of Dapchi, Yoba State, on February 19 uh, in virtually identical circumstances to those in Chibok, in 2014. Uh, Sierra Leone Times uh, on its part uh, noted uh, that uh, Freetown Sierra Leone's election uh, commissioner has uh, alleged uh, police are uh, disrupting its activities ahead of the March 27 presidential runoff as a top uh, polling official was summoned for questioning. The paper noted uh, that tensions are high ahead of the voter in a campaign marked by violence, attacks and intimidation against politicians and supporters along with an uptick in inflammatory tribal rhetoric. Uh, Proceeding to the Southern African nation of Zimbabwe, the Herald newspaper noted that uh, outgoing uh, U.S. ambassador to Zimbabwe, Harry Thomas, Thomas Jr., has held uh, the President uh, Manangagwa for delivering uh, on his promises, saying he has created excitement among investors who are now jostling for opportunities in the country. Uh, speaking at his farewell roundtable in Harare, he said uh, the American embassy's economic section has never been busier with investors calling to inquire about investment opportunity in Zimbabwe. Malawi's Nyasa Times uh, cited uh, that uh, First Lady Gertrude Mutarika uh, persuaded uh, Malawians to be champions in protecting children, especially girls who are often uh, subjected to early and forced uh, marriages. Uh, the journal cited that Mata Murit, uh, Mutarika said all Malawians should be part of a solution to end child marriages, which is already a problem uh, in uh, that part of the country. Uh, to the northern African nation of Egypt, uh, Egypt's independent newspaper postulated uh, that Pope uh, Tawadros II of the Coptic Orthodox Church stressed that the world's attention will be focused on the turnout in Egypt's presidential election. He encouraged participation in the voting process, although he expected a candidate in court to sweep a victory. The Pope called on the people of Egypt to participate positively in the upcoming presidential elections to present a good example of the country before the world calling on people not to listen to the lies and rumors that aim to weaken the determination of all Egyptians.
And that's how we had for you on this edition of Press Today Run Up. Thanks for always being there. But that's not all. Stay with Emanuela Nyoki and the rest of the panel as you keep on enjoying your debate program, The Pan African Debates. Thank you very much, Clarence Wilderman, for that detailed roundup of all what has been happening within the week. Thank you for being there. You're most welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with the debate, as I earlier said. So I'm going to present to you my panel, those that are in the studio with me that we're going to talk on this particular topic on the situation in France, that is uh, the conflict between France and Libya, on whether the former colonel, the late colonel Gaddafi, actually sponsored the campaign of 2007 of uh, former leader Sarkozy. So I'm going to begin with Mr. Tao. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the Pan-African debate. Good afternoon, Emanuela. Thank you for inviting me this afternoon to participate in this uh, debate. And also I want to say good afternoon to other panelists and all the viewers of Africa media all over the world. Thank you very much for coming. Mr. Aberolan, good afternoon. You're welcome to the debate. Good afternoon, Emanuela. Thank you for yet another opportunity to address burning issues in the world and Africa in particular. Good afternoon, dear panelists and uh, fellow televiewers. Thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Mr. Michael DiMaggio, good afternoon. It's a pleasure having you in the studio. Good it's been a while, though. Yeah, of course, of <laughs> course. Uh, and I'm sure that I miss my people. And my people <laughs> yes. miss me, I'm sure. Yes, it's been a while. A lot of issues now on hand. Uh, good afternoon to Africa. Good afternoon for the uh, televiewers of Africa Media. I'm sure that you're still keeping the faith. Uh, even though some of us, the panelists, we go uh, and sometimes we stay mm -hmm. to come back, but we know that you are always there. And when we go, is to gather more information for you. So good afternoon to all who are uh, watching us now. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for honoring our invitation. So uh, before I get to the topic of today, the major topic, we have a paper by Lorenza. But before I come to this paper, let's first of all talk about what is happening in the Republic of Cameroon. What is happening in the Republic of Cameroon, first of all? We know that uh, some ministers have been locked up. I'm not going to give all the details, but I want us to concentrate on one of the ministers, Minister Basili Atangana Kanu. He actually left Cameroon to Nigeria when he knew that they were looking for him. He ran away from the country and he was arrested in Nigeria and deported back to Cameroon and he has been locked up. We should take note that he's a former minister of water and energy and uh, he was actually moved from that country or uh, removed from his position with the March 2nd uh, cabinet shift which the president did in the country and after that he was asked not to leave the country but he left the country and was only caught in Nigeria. So I want uh, my panel to just give me their view on the situation because we have the Operation Sparrowhawk. This is not the first time in English. In French, it's called IPV. They have been arresting ministers, locking them up for uh, having embezzled huge sums of money. What do you think about this event with this particular minister who tried to leave the country? I'll begin with you, Mr. Tau. Ah, Thank you very much, uh, Emanuela. First thing I want to say that I will begin to say this. If a purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse is inevitable. One thing that you have to know that people that find themselves in the corridor of leadership today, they don't know the purpose. That is the main reason they are why they are abusing it. If they know the purpose, they would know that the reason why they are there is to serve the people that voted them or the president, that, to serve the country in general. And one thing I want you to know that any leader who doesn't have the fear of God this is how they behave. And secondly, if they don't have a moral integrity, which is a self-discipline, this is all what we have. After, if you are being removed, because the reason why you are being post, put in a position of leadership is to serve the, the country, not to embezzle the money that has been put in your, in your custody. But see what we are seeing in African leaders today. Whenever they find themselves in a position of leadership, they want to embezzle all the money instead of serving the, the, the population, they are serving their own purse, which is not good for our country. And I was so surprised when the news that how can a minister at his own honor that the instruction has been given, if he doesn't have a skeleton in his combo, how does he have the right to leave the country after the instruction has been given. And at the end of the day, he thought that Nigeria can be a safer, a, a safer place. I want to tell them that Nigeria can never be a safer 
a place for any Cameroonians that run away from uh, 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 Cameroon to Nigeria because Nigeria and Com uh, Cameroon has a tight relationship that no man can ever break in it. And this is what we have to know. I ran to Nigeria and disguised like a lady, which is, this is ridiculous, a minister, a former minister indeed. This is very ridiculous. Disguise himself like a lady, which is very, very ridiculous to, 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 to humanity. And leaders should learn from all these mistakes that whenever they find themselves in a place of position, they are there to serve us. They are there to make, they are not there for their own purpose. Thank you very much, uh, Emmanuel. Thank you. Mr. Aburul, and what is your take on this? Because he's not the only one that has been arrested. We also have the former rector of the University of Douala, Mr. Bicolo, and his crew, the accountant, and a couple of other people were arrested. What do you think about uh, the fact that IPV is arresting ministers that are, they have embezzled, and then this particular act that Mr. Tangana did? Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Manuela, to look at the act of Mr. Antangana. I want to first start by mentioning the fact that there is a problem that Africans, or we Africans, face. Mm -hmm. And that is the fact we fail to understand that each time we're given a position or a post of responsibility, we are accountable for whatever action we take. Now, because we feel that when you are given a post of responsibility, you are accountable to no person, or to nobody, mm -hmm. the first thing is you want to stay there till thy kingdom come. You want to be there till eternity. And so in Africa and in Cameroon, what I have noticed is when somebody has a position or is appointed to a post of responsibility or elected, the first thing they want to try as much as they can to make sure that they remain in that post of responsibility as long as they can. And the only reason why someone will want to stay in power or remain in a post of responsibility for as long as they can is because there are a lot of wrong things that they do, assuming that they are not accountable to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so looking at the act of uh, Basil and Tangana, I think he also had this mindset because he's been seeing it with the others and probably assuming that maybe there are some ministers who came up, had the opportunity to mess up the system and then maybe stayed for longer than he anticipated. I think that he was taken on our way. I look at it from the perspective that he was uh, probably substituted or removed from his post of responsibility before he had prepared his package or his way out. Mm -hmm. And so without surprise, and he felt embarrassed and thought that, oh, if these people have removed me suddenly and they are giving me uh, uh, an injunction not to go out of the country, then it is certain that they are going to pick me up. They are cooking up some documents to see how they can get me locked up. And to him, he felt, instead of him receiving that shame or taking the shame, it is better that Hisumugu is himself out of the country mm -hmm. to a safe, a safe heaven. I think that's an act, and we need to learn to understand that if you look at the West, I admire a lot of things about the West. Somebody serves, even the president of a country or minister, they serve, and by the time their tenure of office is over, they come back to the streets and function like the normal man that they used to be before they... They, they, they were appointed or elected to power. I think that is the mindset we need to have. So it's a problem of mentality. I think when Africans and Cameroonians begin to realize this, it will give us a sense of maturity and responsibility so that we will be accountable for our actions while in power, so that when we don't more have the opportunity to stay in power, we will understand that whatever we have done had been to serve the people and not ourselves, and so we will happily leave power and wait if there, was, if there is any audit or any control that it's probably programmed for our office to evaluate the work we did. We will be confident enough to stand and even ask the people to call us for explanation when need be. Thank you so much, Emanuela. Thank you. With you, Mr. Michael Dimanjo, I want us to talk about the relationship between the government of Cameroon and Nigeria. We see them not only helping Cameroon in this situation, we have the Abazodia leaders who are also deported from Nigeria. Help, Nigeria helped the government of Cameroon to get them, and now the second incident. That's the first thing we'll talk about. And then secondly, this is not the first time that they're arresting ministers for embezzling money and doing stuff, but we still have ministers that are still doing the same thing. Is it that uh, the job is not well done? And some people are complaining that this, when they arrest them, the money is not gotten back to the coffers. Yes, talking about uh, the kind of relationship Cameroon has with Nigeria, mm -hmm. of course. It's a relationship that is supposed to pay off. You know that this relationship was actually strengthened, really strengthened. It started far way back, but it was really strengthened with the fight of uh, terrorism. 
Boko Haram. Yes. And, and of course, Cameroon and Nigeria started having something in common. They said, if we could come together, we think that we will be able to uh, fight this uh, uh, terrorist group that is actually disturbing the Cameroon and Nigeria. And so th that relationship was strengthened. And, and I'm happy that it has been very, a very, very honest one. Uh, yes, uh, let, let's say so, that is very, very honest. That <laughs> 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 so I don't know how uh, Nigeria has become so loyal to mm -hmm. Cameroon mm -hmm. uh, know, at this particular state. There are rumors that, that yeah. they were paid for even though. Uh, of course, of course. They, they, they so, I mean, there are a lot of intricacies into the issue. Uh, Definitely. I, I don't really want to go into the intricacies. That, mm -hmm. uh, but but I, I want to look at, uh, at uh, Tanganakuna as a coward. Yeah. Looking at him as a coward because if I were the one who entered Nigeria, they would never have caught me. Okay. That is the thing. He's a coward. And that's the first thing I would look about, I think about him. I mean, I, the story we get is that he got into Nigeria instead of even getting into the suburb or into the ghetto, maybe to first of all hide. hide. He was going to uh, those big hotels. Big, big hotels. I mean, and you know, I mean, he was being trapped. I mean, he, uh, he thought that by entering Nigeria, that was just already all and that he could live his life normally and then prepare his way maybe to escape to Canada or to the U.S. as others have done. You know, uh, this is not the first case of mm -hmm. uh, a, a PVR that has run out of this country. Mm -hmm. You know of uh, Ambassador Zhang, yes. uh, who was the Minister of uh, Public Works, mm -hmm. uh, who is now in Canada. He successfully went out of this country. And now we are asking strong questions to ask. What, how, I mean, our, our secret service, when they say that somebody is being surveyed and then somebody is supposed to be prosecuted or somebody is supposed to be called up or questioning, mm -hmm. normally the person is supposed to be surveyed, the person is supposed, I mean, he's kept, the police is constantly supposed to uh, actually uh, get information, minute by minute information about this person. Now, we, we, uh, we know that uh, if it is a right country, many heads are going to fall with mm -hmm. what has just happened at Tangnakuna. How did he get out of his house knowing that, I mean, this man was the really at the verge of being going here at the mm -hmm. criminal court I mean, to be questioned, and that somebody was supposed to be, I mean, surveying him to see every move of his. He lives here, goes through the sideways, takes a boot, goes to Nigeria, and nobody, see, even if they say somebody disguises as a woman, is disguised as a woman, but he's supposed to travel with papers. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know that as a woman, you, you're supposed to have your own personal papers that you travel with. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is a lot of questions that are surrounding uh, what is happening uh, in, in this issue. I would like to call this a, a, a tragedy. Uh, when, when we were in, in Form 2, they thought about two issues about a play, a comedy and a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And they told us that a tragedy is a story that starts well, but has a very, very sad ending. Mm -hmm. this, these are government ministers who are were bourgeoisie, yes. as I would call it, you know. Those are people who, when, when they when are making an outing, ten cars. I mean, they are making an oh, outing, oh, you see a long line of cars. Now, you now begin to see the vanity of life. I think that our clergyman will talk about the vanity of life to us. You know, you see how life is so, I mean, so it's meaningless mm -hmm. that today you are at the top of the roof and you are at the, uh, at, at the level of authority and all other persons at the level of solidarity you are able to command and then the next day you are like a chick i mean that you i mean you a chick that has been poured water you know I, I think that there is a lot to be desired about this issue this man was the uh, director of uh, uh, water. uh, uh come mm -hmm. i mean left when as minister of water and again, I'm so sad that he was still caught in water because they brought him under the rains. So, I mean, I don't know whether he's... And he was uh, quite a well watered in the world. Well, 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 so, it is, I don't know whether it's a mistake or it is actually something that I mean, uh, was made uh, for, to happen to him. But I think that our country needs to be very, very serious. If we need to have a whole government, of course, we are blaming something that like we need to have a whole government that is being ferried into the maximum prison, that there is a problem. And then the, 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 the question now we, we ask is, I mean, this money that they embezzle, as your second question was, Emanuela, mm -hmm. where is the money? Now, you will understand that uh, we who have tried to get into the inside sources of what is happening in Cameroon is that somebody sits somewhere, maybe like in the presidency, he calls and says, okay, this is what we need. We need a contribution. We need to, to, uh, the, the, uh, to disburse this sum of money. Sometimes there is no signature of that money. And you, foolishly, because you are a lawyer, you just disburse the money. Know that what you are doing is what is going to catch you tomorrow. Because these people, I mean, apart from the fact that they live very, very luxurious lives, we have even heard about uh, some of the directors who were in prison who, when they went to the nightclub, you know, they put whiskeys and, and wine on all the tables. I mean, it was all. 
a poem and fanfare. But I think that, if, 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 uh, like the Ang Angafun have it, civil servants are supposed to be people who serve the nation. But because we live in a country where we are talking about fonctionnaire, which has a different meaning, of course. A fonctionnaire in the French term means that what? You are working and you are the boss. You are not at the service of anybody, you are the boss. We have even had a minister who told, openly said, I'm talking about a minister of communication who is still in place, who said he's responsible only to the head of state. He doesn't give account to any Cameroonian. Yes. So these are the kind of comments that you make you understand how these people work. You know, people are working without any accountability. Uh, at the end of the day, somebody knows that he is a boss and he can say anything, he can do, make any declaration, he can do any transaction without anybody asking a question. But unfortunately, the issue is that people are not learning a lesson. Uh, the science of the time has ta have taught us and people have not learned any lesson. The more people go to prison, the more there is embezzlement and the more there is misery in Cameroon because Cameroon is at a level whereby you realize that very little people are rich and then uh, very few people are rich and the population is living in abject poverty. Yes. And then you find these people, you, you want us to sympathize with them. We cannot sympathize with them. I think that these people should be paid, should pay back for what, and that is what is unfortunate that they take them and they do not pay back. These people have huge accounts of, uh, of money in banks, mm -hmm. but the money is not frozen, the accounts are not frozen, and then they tell us they keep them in prison. For what for? That is a million question. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for talking on that particular topic. It's, uh, we're still going to follow up to get more things that are happening because we hear that uh, there are some more heads that are going to fall in the next coming days. So we'll follow up what is happening in the Republic of Cameroon. Let's move over to our topic for today, talking about uh, the former leader, Sarkozy, who was kept in custody depending investigation with uh, the issue of illicit funding of his uh, 27 election. So let's watch this report done by Laurence Loom on that and we'll get details after that. Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy was earlier this week taken into police custody to be questioned over allegations that he received millions of euros in illegal election campaign funding from the regime of the late Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Sarkozy was being questioned Tuesday morning by police officers specializing in corruption, money laundering and tax evasion at their office in the western Parisian suburb of Nanterre as part of an inquiry into whether Gaddafi and others in Libya illegally financed his winning election campaign in 2007. It is the first time police have questioned Sarkozy over the allegations. A French inquiry into alleged illegal campaign funding from Libya was opened in 2013. The inquiry did not name anyone as a suspect and has centered on claims of corruption, influencer trafficking, forgery, abuse of public funds and money laundering. Investigators are examining claims that Gaddafi's regime secretly gave Sarkozy 50 million euros overall for the 2007 campaign. In April 2012, the investigative website Mediapart published a document it said was signed by a senior Libyan figure stating the regime approved a payment of 50 million euros to support Sarkozy's election campaign. Previously, Sarkozy and Claude Guéant a close ally and former minister, claimed the documents obtained by Mediapart were false. The investigation gained momentum after a wealthy French Lebanese businessman, Naziata Takiadin, who was close to Gaddafi's regime, told Mediapart in 2016 that he had personally delivered suitcases stuffed with cash from the Libyan leader as payments towards Sarkozy's campaign. He said he made uh, three trips uh, from Tripoli to Paris in late 2006 and early 2007 and claimed that each time he carried a suitcase containing uh, 1.5 million euros to uh, 2 million euros in uh, 200 euros and 500 euros notes that was given by Gaddafi's military intelligence chief. In March 2011, Gaddafi's son, Saif R. Islam, told uh, Euronews that Nicolas Sarkozy must uh, give back the money he accepted from Libya to finance his electoral campaign, noting that there was some evidence to show for that. Sarkozy's relationship with the foreign Libyan strongman has been said to be complex. Shortly after becoming the president of France, he invited Gaddafi for a state visit and welcomed him with high honors, but later on put France in the forefront of NATO-led airstrikes against Gaddafi's troops that helped the rebel fighters topple his regime in 2011. The 63-year-old former French leader has, however, dismissed the allegations as the claims of vindictive Libyan regime members furious over his participation in the U.S.-led military intervention that ended Gaddafi's 41-year rule. Gaddafi was captured and killed on October 20, 2011, during the Battle of Sirte. Western powers like the United States, Britain and France 
have over the years been accused of the death of Gaddafi because he wanted to empower Africa and free it from their claws. Gaddafi had a great vision for the continent such as introducing the gold diner to back African currencies so they could become free from the dollar and also protecting Africa's vast natural resources from Western looting. But all of this were never realized when NATO launched its first airstrikes in Libya in March 2011 that eventually led to the death of Gaddafi. Sarkozy is just the first to be brought before justice in a long list of perpetrators who brought about the fall and destabilization of Libya. Thank you very much, Lawrence Yalum, for that detailed report on uh, the issue taking place in France and what happened since 2011. So I'm going to begin with you, Mr. Abro. What do you think about the situation? Because this is something that Gaddafi said even before he died. He said when Nicolas Sarkozy refused that he did not help sponsor, he said Gaddafi was stupid and that he could not believe that after taking care of him, helping him to get to where he is, and now he turns him back, his back on him and said he has not sponsored his events. Now the authorities in France are having <coughs> sufficient proof until they could put him behind bars to question him for this act. What do you think about this gesture? Yeah, I think... Looking at the whole issue, I usually would want to look at, especially when I'm addressing Pan-African issues, mm -hmm. I want to look at it from the African perspective. Yeah. Now, one of the key things that we need to understand before we start looking at Sarkozy's or maybe refusal of having received any financing from Libya or the former Libyan president, mm -hmm. it's we need to come to understand that we need to take our responsibilities and handle our things by ourselves. And every country and every uh, um, continent has its responsibility in its hands. Now, I want to go back to Sarkozy's refusal of having received any loan or any um, assistance from Libya. Mm -hmm. I think there are enough evidence and proofs not coming from one or two persons to justify, because you will see in 2011, Sarkozy's son, Islam Gaddafi, confirmed or reported to Euro News very clearly in an independent report. He confirmed that Sarkozy needs to refund to Libyan people every dime that had been paid over to him to assist him in his uh, election campaign in 2007. Now, if you look at that, we would say that, okay, it's because Nicolas Sarkozy participated or in his father being removed from power or being killed, and so he's acting from a revenge point. But if you go a little further, you will see that that argument may not be strong enough. Because in 2012, you see, the media part is coming with another publication affirming the fact that Nicolas Sarkozy received a 50 million euro assistance from the Libyan government mm -hmm. and that this document is signed by a senior Libyan figure. Now this is another new uh, or another independent media reporting on the same subject and claiming or alleging that Sarkozy actually received funding for his elections which he refused. Yeah. Now as if that is not enough you will also see that Ziad Takedin is confirming also that he personally carried suitcases of euros, millions of euros to Sarkozy to assist him or from, to Sarkozy from the, Libyan, the former Libyan president. So there is every evidence to prove that Sarkozy actually received assistance from Libya. Now I think that, like you said already, there is enough proof for Sarkozy is a former president of France to stand in public and deny that he didn't receive any assistance from Libya. I think that he's just making a fool of himself and he's, he's making people to wonder his credibility. It's making a lot of people to doubt. And not just that, there are lots of other evidence of misdeeds even in his 2012 campaign where he was uh, yearning for re-election into the post of a president. So with putting all these things together, I think it would, it would have been more honorable for him to stand in public and apologize to the nation for having violated their law on election, on the, having received illegal assistance for his election campaign. So I think 
Sarkozy should behave himself as a gentleman. It may be a challenging thing to do, but I think that that is a more honorable approach to life rather than refusing a thing and allowing the court to want to dig into the details. And then what makes you a former president from another room in the street? When you can accept your error and then apologize to the court so that whatever actions they are taking, they know, okay, this is actions taken from the perspective of an apologetic mind. So I look at it from that perspective. And to me, in my own opinion, I think that he's making, uh, he's making himself a loving stock in public by refusing, having received any assistance from the Libyan government. Thank you, Mr. Abu. Mr. Michael, now there is also another question about the, mo the motive behind Sarkozy's decision to spearhead a NATO operation against Gaddafi's regime in 2011. And now people are thinking that because probably uh, Gaddafi sponsored his campaign and he did not want uh, it to be out in the public and so he went to NATO. When we were talking about uh, Gaddafi as a dictator, he was, because he was one of the major people who spearheaded NATO in order to, uh, for them to attack uh, uh, Libya. Do you think with all what was said before, because on this panel we have spoken about those who caused the, call, the fall of Gaddafi as Sarkozy's name has always come up. Do you think it's actually a dream come true from what has been happening before and that this is finally coming to the limelight that he had something to do with Gaddafi even though he refused vehemently? I mean, there is a saying that when a man is bought, he stays bought. Yes, that's how they say in politics. When a man is bought, he stays bought. As he ceases to be an honest politician. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, Sarkozy has done. He has ceased to be an honest politician. What, what, the fact is clear that Sarkozy wanted to, uh, I mean, to wipe up all the traces I mean, that led to his elections in France. All the traces of contribution. Now, let, let, let us actually get our viewers to understand this issue. What is the issue about sponsorship? Why, why is it that France is following Sarkozy for, uh, for a foreign sponsorship? Mm. We know that that is accepted in America. Yeah. That any, you can, I, I remember the, uh, there's a, a, a business lady who sponsored Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign to the tune of $20 million. She disbursed and gave to her. But because America has an open policy to a sponsorship of election. Because sometimes we can be talking about these things and people are asking themselves, but if the sponsor is campaign, what is, is the, the issue? Problem. Well, I think we need to understand these things. Mm -hmm. In France, they have a policy. And their policy is that you sponsor, an individual can only contribute to a party. An individual, if I'm a businessman and I decide to, I want to help maybe uh, the SDF or the CPDM in the case in Cameroon, I will decide to sponsor or to assist the SDF and the CPDM. I will not assist Paul Bia or Neil John Fundy. And there is a limit to that assistance. Mm -hmm. An individual can assist only up to the tune of $7,500. Uh, 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 yes, you cannot go above that for a year. You cannot. If you go above that, I mean, you have to, I mean, it's against the law already. So that is what, because the country gives the party, an individual, the possibility to carry out his campaign. And therefore, they do not accept any corporate, like a country or whatsoever, like what Libya did, to give money to an individual candidate to buy the conscience. Because France believes that when they give them the money, they buy the consciences of the voters. And that's what they don't want. So that is what led to, uh, the, to, to where we are today. Uh, Sarkozy went above this and that is why he's trying to wipe off the traces because if that if that is realized that that is what he did then he is going to be prosecuted and the law is clear on that he is going to serve 10 i mean years in jail and he went as far as having to get not only a little sum but 50 million dollars i mean that is so enormous and now we can understand how he bought the consciences of the voters during in, two, uh, 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 in 2007, 2007, 2006, 2007, leading to ele his election. And that is what happened. So, but we have had ample, we have had ample evidence actually to show that Sarkozy actually had a fishy game with Gaddafi. Gaddafi didn't have the opportunity to talk it op openly, but his son has been able to pronounce on that. I remember uh, I, Islam, actually declared it. He even spoke again on Wednesday welcoming exactly. the idea and said that he has proof. Good. If the judiciary is interested, they should call him here and he brings another Exactly. That he there has. is even somebody who helped in the transaction of the money who is already testifying. That's Zach uh, Takodin. 
he helped in the transaction. And, and this, this, that, uh, uh, is a business guy. He's a, he's a very big business guy who owns a resort. I mean, if it's a Franco Libanese, who owns a resort. Now, when you own a resort like a touristy place, you are in contact with so many politicians. And he declared that is where he had his fame. He had a contact with politicians, and he came in contact with Sarkozy. And since he was a businessman, he could play that game between Sarkozy and Gaddafi. And he has testified that that is what he did. So there is no way in which uh, Sarkozy can even refuse. There is no way. So we, we see how it, 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 this brought Sarkozy to where he is today. We even have, there is even one of uh, his clothes aides. Uh, 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 by name Claude, uh, 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 what, what is that his name, his name again? He's called Claude uh, Guyan. Th those are people who were working with him so closely and actually they have been under investigation for, I mean, their rule in the process. There's one, there's even one who was, uh, uh, who was even uh, uh, arrested in, in January in London, Ale Alexander Jury, who was a close to, to Sarkozy and he uh, was arrested in connection to what happened. But then, I don't want us uh, to uh, the only think that because the, the, the investigation is going on. Mm. But I think Sarkozy was, he actually soiled his hands in so many issues. Because apart from the deal with uh, Gaddafi, Sarkozy was al is also being investigated for illegal arms deals. So we should also know that. So there are a lot of crimes against this young man. I, I had all seen this man to be an entertainment president. <laughs> I had never looked at Sarkozy to be really a real French president. I, honestly, during the whole of his terms, I, when I looked at the man, I just started laughing. I said, look at this man. This is a man that people have even thrown a uh, yahoo on him and in public. I mean, they have disgraced him on so many occasions. I remember that you cannot buy the hand that fed you. I mean, what he did to Gaddafi it is something that, about, and it's not only to Gaddafi alone. I even saw a picture, a caricature uh, with uh, Gbagbo in Ivory Coast, uh, where Gbagbo is standing and looking at uh, uh, Sarkozy in the gate uh, in, in prison, uh, I mean, and laughing and mocking at him. Because the, he also plays a very, very active role to uh, the, the descent to, 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 to hell of uh, Gbagbo, where he is today. So we think that this man, all that he tried to do, to, I mean, w w to, to connive with the British Prime Minister uh, at a time, or was to, I mean, cancel or to absolutely wipe up all the traces of the fact that because he knows that in future mm -hmm. that was going to happen. But we should know that he's not even the first president who, I mean, has uh, gone, uh, undergone this kind of uh, a disgrace. We remember Jacques Chirac, uh, yeah. when he was the mayor of uh, Paris, what happened is that he was investigated after when he came out of, uh, went down. Uh, that he illegally offered jobs to his party members when he was the mayor of Paris. So these people know that afterwards, their footsteps will haunt them, their shadows will haunt them of all their illegal deeds, but they keep on doing what they are doing. So I think that if uh, uh, Sarkozy is found guilty, I mean, I, I really think that all evidence are already against him because when you even look at his ministers, they have already been investigated. I mean, uh, you have people like Claude Guyang, you have your Breeze, Hotful, you have Eric Wood. All of these people have already been auditioned and already they are almost 80% sure that they are, they are guilty of the crime they committed because they acted. They actually acted. There's even Sarkozy, uh, Gaddafi's treasurer mm -hmm. uh, by name Bashir Saleh, who has even I mean, accepted, he has even confirmed the allegation that uh, they transferred money, money from Libya. To, so there is no way. I think that this man is already out for <laughs> an issue. <laughs> a long time. Yes. Thank you very much, mm. Mr. Dimancho. Now, Mr. Tao, what is your take on this issue? Many people saw this arrestation as uh, a relief, a big relief, like uh, uh, late Gaddafi's son said, Saif Islam. He said that uh, he gave proof, he showed proof to Euronews and some other authorities in France, and he expected that since, uh, probably since 2013, that he told them about these things and they had proof and showed them they did not take action but even though it's coming seven years later it's better to be late than never and he welcomed the idea and said that Sakudin needs to go down for it because those are the people that are behind the death of his father what is your take on the situation in France thank you very much Emanuela I'm going to surprise you this afternoon because I'm going to take it in a spiritual impact of what uh, Sarkozy have, have done mm -hmm. you know there is a saying in the Bible that because the sentence against an evil work is not speedily, therefore the heart of some of son of men is fully set in them to do evil. Because I believe that 
French government gave time for Sarkozy. It's not because they don't know the truth. They gave him a long time to study the case before they will fight him. As one thing I want you to know that in French government, it's like a, a cinema to all the old world today. But I want to let you know that one thing that you will know that when it comes to African continent, the high CC is operational. But when it comes to the president and all the Western leaders, you will see that the ICC is no more assisting. Mm. That is a problem we are facing because there is a superiority complex between African and Europeans. And this is what is really happening now. That all after all this cinema, and you will see at the end of the day, they will never jail this man. But I want to assure you because even as I'm analyzing this in a spiritual way, the Bible says that God is a God of jealous. That if we, even if Zakozi does not pay for it, his generation upon generation to four generation will pay for the killing of Gaddafi. That is very sure. Because God is against killing of a human being. How can it be said that a man that fed you, a man that helped you, and you are not the same person that killed him because you don't want any secret to be leaked out? I want to assure you today that nothing that you have been done in secret, let it be many years to come, the, the truth will still be out. Zakozi have never thought that the secret of this thing will be out. That is the main reason he hide himself in the corner. He thought that the issue is all over. He has tried to execute a lot of people. And do you know, Sarkozy is the first person because it's the origin, it's the attitude of the bombarding or bombarding of uh, Libra. And that is the main reason he's the, he's, he's the one that started it. UK and Obama was also involved. But Obama's name was not mentioned because Sarkozy is the one that traveled Hillary to is the one that traveled to US to bargain how the NATO countries is going to bombard uh, Libya. So that and when they want to start this problem, they make the world to know that Gaddafi is a devil. Is a devil. <laughs> Not knowing Sarkozy is a devil. Because I listened to his interview. And do you know the Bible is also say, ye of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father is in you. And Zakozi is a real devil in this world, according to the Bible. He said, from the beginning of it all, any liar is a murderer. And it, you can never get a truth from a murderer. Somebody that is a murderer, you can never get truth out of it. He said you will only do the things of your father, which is a devil. Today, he went, he's not even ashamed of himself. He went to, to SCI, claiming that all what they have said is lie. That there is no even proof of any document that shows that there cannot, no judicial will give you the, their proofs. And they have given, as the investigation is still going, and they have given him 10 days to appear in court. And we will see how far. And I said one of the, the this day around, I told her that even the blood of Gaddafi is crying from the grave. He will hunt Sarkozy, whether he like this or not. Because he has done what is against woman right against Africa because the Liberians are not complaining of their government. But when they want to start all this, they say it was, it was a dictator. He's an evil man. He, and these people are enjoying their president. They don't have any problem with their president. Every Libyan has a good money. Every Libyan is living well. They have a good house. Even when you have a child, the president will give you enough money assist. to assist you. Mm. What will we expect from that 
a, a president that doing everything for his population. These are the people that say that have the fear of God. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you don't have a fear of God as a leader, you will not have the power to be able to apply wisdom to rule the people that God has given to you as a population. Thank you very much. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Tawo. Now, Mr. Roland, uh, the situation in Libya with the son, with what the son has said and said he has proved, do you think the, the government of France is actually going to call for the son to bring his proof? Because we have this thing between uh, the Europeans and the Africans, even though the proof has been there, but do you think they're they are really going to call him to, to, to stand and uh, probably give a comment on the situation? Yeah, I think that um, <coughs> the court has its procedures Mm -hmm. And if the evidence they have so far is sufficient enough to prosecute the former French president, that's mm -hmm. Nicolas Sarkozy, then they may not have any need to call him for further evidence. Mm -hmm. But if there is a need, since he says he has other hard evidence to justify, if probably Nicolas Sarkozy will stand in court and his lawyers will defend him enough that the evidence appear to be insufficient, mm -hmm. I think that they're going to call him for more evidence to support uh, the allegations. But looking at uh, the moves that have made so far, and looking at it from an African perspective, because I said, so long as I'm talking about on the pan-African debate, I always want to come back to the African Definitely. perspective. That's our focus. Looking at it, I would say that the, the French government is making, uh, it's working already on the right path. Because in Africa, I don't think we've heard of things like that. And so if they're already uh, bringing this kind of humiliation, on a former president, I don't want to think that they will just start the process and then stop somewhere because we know that Africans are genuses in starting a procedure and never getting to a conclusion. Mm. But in the West, I think the contrary is true. It's either they start a thing and take it to conclusion or they don't start it at all. So I'm confident that the, the, the judicial system will surely look into the case and if they have sufficient evidence to prosecute the former French president, they're going to do that. They, there's no laughter about it. Did you see this coming? Yeah, I think I, I see this very clearly because uh, if you look at it from 2011, mm -hmm. when the Gaddafi son made a comment on this subject, mm -hmm. you move to 2013 when investigation started and probably the DNA actually directed to Nicolas Sarkozy. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of uh, gloominess, a lot of doubts, a lot of people were asking questions as to where are they going to? But presently, we see fresh evidence coming and individuals willing to stand and testify that they delivered cash in suitcases to the former French president. And because I want to believe that because of this hard evidence that has popped up recently, the case is becoming so serious. To me, I believe that in the days ahead, in no distant time from now, we would surely get a conclusion to this. And this, again, as I want to add, it's going to teach us Africans a serious lesson to know that you can get away or you can get to power, use the resources of the people who have voted you to power the way you want and you think that you get away with it. Because surely in the near future or one day in the future, it will surely cut, uh, uh, catch you. In fact, I, I want to look at it again from this perspective that, you see, I, I think that this... We, we, we're going to get to this conclusion because Nicolas Sarkozy himself, from the day one when this, this issue was mentioned, he says he's been living in a kind of a hell. He's so uncomfortable about the issue that to me, I think, a personality of his caliber, being uncomfortable for allegations that he claims not to have an idea, uh, I, uh, I think something is wrong somewhere. Because if you are accused and you claim that You've been falsely accused. There's no need to bother. In fact, you should be the one to speed up the case so that you get a conclusion and the population or the public and the world at large understands that uh, or there was a blackmail somewhere and the court has cleared that issue. But when you become uncomfortable to the extent you don't even want people to talk about it and it is reported that he had been summoned several times to, for, for hearings at the police station but he had not turned up until now. It tells you that there is something somewhere hiding that Nicolas Sarkozy doesn't want the judicial system to dig into. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Michael, now, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy is the first. And we know that in this stream, when it comes to Gaddafi's dead and people that were behind, there were many names that came up, like Hillary Clinton, the U.S. in the U.K. Do you think other heads are going to fall after this? The fr France has started. Do you think the wind of change is going to blow around? Of course. It should really be a wind of change because, you know, that sometimes people are always waiting for a trigger. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that is really a trigger. And people, some people used to feel that uh, ah, it would be a disgrace to our country uh, if we take a former president uh, to court or maybe we want to prosecute him or whatsoever. But I think that this has set a good precedence for other countries to follow. And you see that it is going to follow like a whirlwind. You know, it's going to follow. Because, I mean, it is like someone has opened up the dark, and, I mean, the dark space and then some light has shown for other countries to be able to say, hey, so if France can do this, I mean, it means that we too can be able to follow up other past presidents in our countries who have been able to, uh, 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 who had misdemeanors and uh, we have been sparing them. I think it should be. And lately, like in the 1990s, they, they win the democracy, uh, they win the blood from Eastern Europe. To, I mean, that we are able to have our democracy and whatsoever, freedom of speech. I think that this kind of win should blow. We really need it to blow. And it should be a tough lesson. It should really be a tough lesson uh, to know that you cannot actually infringe your people suffering in order to please a, a single person. I, I, I'm still blaming Gaddafi for one thing, you know. Mm -hmm. he, uh, despite the fact that we have all the good adjectives to describe him, to yeah, describe his government, you know, the Ramijia, that is a kind of uh, democracy that he, he had and all those. But I think that he too had this fault uh, because if he were alive, mm -hmm. he were still alive and as a president of Libya, and if this thing was happening and he was still the president, I think that Libya people too would have taken him to task and ask him, but how could you use our money to go and sponsor a single individual? And it shows that you were doing that for selfish reasons. That is it, because he wanted Sarkozy to support him. And as I've said, in democracy, there is no permanent friend. Mm -hmm. there, there's a permanent interest, you know. Uh, at a moment, Sarkozy came to actually cajole uh, Gaddafi to say, okay, you are my good friend, yes. please can you assist me in this election? If you assist me in this election, I'm going to support you for life and uh, as long as I'm a president. And now, Gaddafi accepted and he saw those, uh, he was garnished with such sweet words and he was lured to use the people's money to sponsor uh, uh, Sarkozy. But it turned out it was a boomerang. You see how and how the boomerang has been. He has lost his life. And today, Sarkozy, who claims that he was all-powerful. And you know, if that is why Sarkozy tried in the last election, to try hard to be re-elected. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to cover this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man used every means to be re-elected in France. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could even sell people, even his family, <laughs> to do that. But I know as nature will have it, he had this had to happen to him this time, this point in time. I mean, he, he could not run away from it. So, talking about the lesson, I think that the, the much lesson that we are going to uh, should be learned here should be learned by the African president, who think that they could buy France, who think that they could use the resources sent to France or sent to Europe or sent to America in order to stay on and on and on in power, because that's what is happening. Yeah. Most African presidents use our resources sent to, to Europe, sent to America, so that, I mean, they, should so that they should stay in power, so but that they should be supported. Against them. That is the issue. Because the issue is happening. Is that is it. The issue is happening that there should be a lesson. Because when the time, when the bell rings, it is like the bell of the last day, Pastor uh, the clergyman. It's like <laughs> the bell of the last day. When you ring, nobody will stay indifferent. Definitely. When you rings, when it rings, I mean, those very people that we are responsible, they, they turn to out to be your worst enemy. Them. You call to them. You take a phone and call. Mm -hmm. And somebody asks you, Mr. Man, do you know me? Who are you? This is your time. You have to go. So it, it, there is no permanent friend. Rather, those people look for permanent interest. And therefore, I think that it should be a big lesson for our presidents in Africa to know that it is better to serve your people and serve selflessly and live with the love of the people than to serve your people and live you think that you'll be loved by Europe because you will, will not love you for, uh, for forever. So that they, after your presidency, you can stay. You home. can stay. You're not running to Europe. That is it. <laughs> and we are telling them that there is life out of the <laughs> presidential <laughs> palaces. <laughs> there is life out outside. Yes. Because most of them are there in the presidential palaces, they don't think that there is life afterward. No, we, we, let him, after we let me to let them know that there is life out. Well, if you are voted out, you can still live your free life your happy life. I mean, you'll be a hero. That is what we are saying. Ghana should be a good example. And it's a good example All of course. The former presidents are in town. I mean, behind it, and they are being taken good care of. I think that that is the issue. It should be a good example for all of us.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Before we, we end this topic, because we have just like probably 20 minutes to end the program, we have our correspondents or our journalists, not our correspondents, we have special envoys in uh, Togo today, in Lome, that is the capital of Togo. Uh, they went there to take part in the African society, uh, civil society meeting, which is taking place. It's organized in Togo, in Lome, particularly. We know that Togo has been going through a crisis for a very long time now. The people are asking the president for Nyasimbe to step down. We know his family has been ruling that country for more than 50 years. Mm -hmm. And because of this, there have been crises. People have been dying and so on. So the African Civil Society decided to organize a meeting in that country to preach peace and to talk about dialogue and unity so that the people can come together and actually have a talk with their president for Nyasimbe and see if they can uh, have a truce because they don't want him again. There's a part which does not want the president and a larger part who wants the president. So they're looking for a way of organizing peace and unity in Togo. So the African Civil Society had a meeting today and uh, special envoys traveled to Togo yesterday. Regina Sondo is with them there. So uh, the meeting started today. They are going to tell us uh, a little bit what's happening on ground. So Regina Sondo is going to talk about the resolutions, what has been said today, the things that uh, they have decided. So uh, I think she's online. They indicated to me that Regina Sondo is online with us. Good afternoon, Regina. Welcome to the program. So you're going to tell us the resolutions that have been taken today and what is happening on ground. We're joining you live from Lomé in Togo at uh, Hotel de Février. And uh, just a few minutes ago, an organization of uh, Africans of the civil society have taken a declaration. They are called a platform. And to them, everything needs to be done to solve the political crisis in Togo. For a very long time, they have been talking, but things have not been going on well. And this declaration was made just a few minutes ago it's to bring about dialogue is to bring peace unity in uh, the Republic of Togo a very lovely and peaceful nation we had um, invited guests such as the King of Benin we had people coming all the way from Ivory Coast from Tunisia from Ghana and even people who had experienced the Arab Spring from countries such as Libya Tunisia and Algeria as this dear country and its citizens that now is the time time to embrace peace because the effects of violence are disastrous. Over back to you there in the studio of Afric Media TV. It's uh, on behalf of the Afric Media team here in Lome Toge that uh, Bashi Mohammed, Yannick Song, Milo Chinda and I myself Regina Sondo from Lome. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, Regina Sondo. Thank you for that uh, detail. Uh, issue telling us what's happening on the ground and so far how far they have gone they are going to still be there for about two days so when they come back probably we're going to get details on the resolutions that have been taken so far in that part of the continent we wish them well and that peace should reign there so back in the studio with us gentlemen everybody's just going to have a last word to talk about the situation with Sarkozy and France and what we expect and the lesson to really learn from it Mr. Michael already started by talking about the lesson so we'll just move around the table and then after that we'll end the program we are almost 10 minutes out. So Mr. Tao, what do you think? What is the lesson to learn? And then what do you think in the next days we're going to be expecting from this other angle? There is a lot of lesson to learn for what has happened to Sarkozy, especially in African continent. Because earlier on, I sensed something that is very, very important. Whenever people find themselves in a place of authority or as a leader the fear of God must be in them so that they can rule the people with simplicity be a servant to the people they are not the boss anybody if you even look the definition of a leader you will know that there are character that a leader is supposed to have before you can be chosen as a leader to lead um, humanity. One of the things that we, the, 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 what we have to learn that people should know that no matter what you do is secret, one day it will blow out. And you will ridicule yourself because if you think that you are going to die in a regime and probably you have been overthrown, 
and the next president that, that comes in now persecute you, you will find yourself to be ridiculed. And people should know they have to, we, they are accountable to the people that have chosen them, that have voted them in. Now that we are talking democracy in Africa, which is a government of the people ruled by the people. We have to know that, we have to learn for what is happening in Western world today. I believe, some people have said that, I've said it, that is a cinema, but I want to assure you that is a beginning because Sarkozy can never be out of it. I believe that the French government just wants to start with the funding first, before all other allegations will, will be used against him. Mm -hmm. Because they know, because Sarkozy have tarnished the image of French. And do you even know that uh, Sarkozy, because he just had a, a naturality of uh, French, because he was born in French. His parents are not, Fr uh, they are not uh, from French, uh, from French land, mm -hmm. according to the I I investigation. He just had that opportunity to have, and he mixed use it that opportunity because it doesn't know the purpose of a leadership. And our leaders in African continent, they should have the fear of God. They should rule as if to say, as a, a other panelists have just said, there is still life after the palace, the presidential palace. Because one day, you'll be out of it. Look what is happening in, uh, in Zimbabwe today. Mm. After uh, Robert Mugabe was have started from the uh, from the throne. He's living his life. Even today, tomorrow he can even be persecuted because there is a lot of error he committed. When he was in that, that is the main reason the man wants to die there. It's true, it's true that he has a, a lot of good things that he has done for the land. But notwithstanding, our leaders should know that whenever they have the opportunity to serve the population, they have to be a servant, not a boss. They have to learn that what goes around comes around. Thank you very much. Thank Eddie. you very much, Mr. Tao. So, Mr. Abro, last words on this uh, issue on Sarkozy and what to expect in the next coming days. Uh, yeah, uh, if I want to maybe say some last words, the point I would like to highlight here is the first thing we need to understand is that leadership, it's we don't lead ourselves or we don't lead for ourselves, we lead for the good of the people. And so if we are leading for the good of the people, then it's certain that we have to be accountable for our actions. And if we are accountable for our actions, then this is the mindset we need to have. Accountability is built on the principle that we plan as though we're going to lead for a thousand years and live as though, or and lead as though you're going to be removed the next second. I think if we have that mindset, it's going to make us to watch every action we take. You plan as though you're going to lead for 1,000 years, meaning all the projects you can imagine, you want to put them in tr uh, on, on track. And at the same time, understanding that your leadership can end at any second, then you will put, uh, or you will, you, you're going to, to, to lead in a way that you'll be accountable for every single action. And if it happens that tomorrow the people say, we don't more want you as our leader, then you will happily step down and allow the people to, to, to vote whoever they think it's best suited to continue with the leadership. So I want to think that as le Africans, this is the lesson we can learn from this case in France. Point number one is that we should understand that leadership is only for a time period. It's not for a lifetime. And so when you are appointed to lead or you're voted to lead, you lead within the period that you've been called to lead. And after that, you give space for another person to come in power. The next thing we need to learn is that African nations, I think they need to copy from France. This is a good example. They need to have a maximum sum of money for those that don't have yet that a, a leader or a political party can disburse or an aspiring presidential candidate can use for his campaigns. That will help also, like the, uh, one of the panelists just mentioned, it will help them to control the extent to which they buy their consciences. One minute. I'm sorry for cutting you. There's a call out. The person is really insisting to talk. We're really at the end of the program. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. 
Hello, we're Hello. listening to you. Hello? Yes. Hello. Yes, we're listening to you. Go ahead. Yeah. I said my name is Andichu Eric Abam. Okay. You're welcome. I said my name is Andichu Eric Abam, a Cameroonian. Yeah, I live in Bamenda. And uh, I want to chip in something. Go ahead. So, what is against uh, the Africans and the Europeans presidents are just a little bit of foolishness. Because I cannot believe that the European has the right to judge an African leader, which we have our own people that are judging them. You can see we never go to school of judgment. Mm. I want to try to contribute what uh, uh, one of uh, your other colleagues was trying to say there, mm -hmm. who said that the African uh, they, they are not even sure that they will prison uh, uh, Sarkozy. And it is true. Tomorrow, they will see theory that Sarkozy has been penalized for whatever he did. But let me tell you, killing of Gaddafi was a part of killing Africa. Because they know the, the most mission of uh, of, uh, of that. And uh, the most essential thing I will make you understand, believe me that all the European president knows that Gaddafi is going to go down. And it was their mission to, com to be complete. I tell you, if they, they will realize Africa used in this world, then we will know that we are heroes. And we will be capable to judge ourselves and put ourselves in order. First of all, what is killing our leaders? Lack of love for the people. I don't believe a leader loving his own people, taking the millions of the people, sending the Europeans to live on a seat that maybe he does not belong to be there again. So please, I'm ashamed to say that right to my country, right to neighboring country, right to West Africa, we are suffering for those things. All of them climb up for their personal interest. I'm sure every day I share chess, I ask questions to myself. But who am I to stop it? I don't believe one, two can just speak, just say their mind the way I'm saying mine, try to express my own feeling. So, brothers, sisters, I'm happy for that program. And um, say the truth, die for the truth, and let the truth set you free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling and participating on the program. Uh, they told me they could not even take your call, but you really insisted. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for cutting you. Do you want to say one thing again before I go to Mr. Michael? We're almost at the, the end yeah, of the The point program. I would like to conclude with mm -hmm. is to mention the fact that I think African presidents shouldn't make themselves coward to mm -hmm. think that they can waste the resources of their people in order to gain favor from the West. Mm -hmm. It is proven beyond reasonable doubt that every effort made to, to, to misuse the resources of the people at the end of the day, we're going to pay probably with our lives, or uh, if not with our lives, but we're going to pay in one way or the other. So it's a lesson that I think that as African and African presidents particularly mm -hmm. need to draw from this particular uh, scenario and from the life that Gaddafi has lived. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Like what the last caller just said, like he feels Africa is suffering because of uh, the actions of Gaddafi. Probably if he did not uh, uh, probably help uh, Sarkozy and get in contact with them and then them trying to kill him because killing him has given a lot of access to many things happening in African countries. Do you have the same uh, 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 light with him, Mr. Michael? And last words. I, I have all said that there is no successful man without a successor. Mm -hmm. I, I, and and, I, and I, I keep on blaming this African president. Even Gaddafi himself, I blame. Having ruled a country for 41 years was mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you will not rule a country, I mean, more than the. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. He, he, as if there was no other person who could also rule. I think like, if the Gaddafi stepped down like what Nelson Mandela did, although I still have some uncertain scores with uh, Nelson Mandela as a hero in Africa, mm -hmm. because that is one of the persons mm -hmm. I usually say you give your people uh, political independence and refuse them economic, economic independence. That's what happened in South Africa and that's why South Africa is having problems today. But at least he did. What he did was good that he stepped down and he was regarded as a hero. He was an advisor. And therefore you see uh, people like uh, Gaddafi who have ruled for 41 years. Uh, it means that when you rule like that, without preparing somebody to take over you, there is bound to be problems. I want you to take for example, Let's take, for example, that Gaddafi was not killed by NATO and uh, 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 Sarkozy and all the world. Mm -hmm. Let's take, for example, that he had a plane crash. 
and then he was not even killed by these people. Then he had a plane, plane crash. No, what would have happened to Libya? Mm -hmm. Libya would have had the same problem. Exactly. And then Libya would have had the same problem. Because there was no successor. There was no there successor. There was no successor. So I think that we African, the lesson that we should be learning now and, uh, is that we should learn to quit power. And the second thing, lesson that I will give is that I mean, sometimes it's good to, when they, like, to get, get, be tactful when you want to do this. Because when you don't do it tactfully, you rather create problems. Yes, when you want to house a president mm -hmm. uh, without using tact, sometimes you create more problems problem. on two problems for the people. So our African president, please be like pelicans. I always admire the bird, the pelican. That's a bird that will wound itself to feed his young when the young are hungry. I think that this is what service is all about. And that is what our African presidents need to do. And that we should be confident about our, com our uh, continent, Africa. Have we got the independence or Mr. not? Michael. Oh, sorry. Okay. sorry. Uh, we have Mr. Sebastian online. He too is insisting to talk. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. Hello, Mr. Sebastian. We're listening to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go ahead with your contributions. Hello? Yes, we're getting you. Go ahead with your contributions. Hello? Sorry about that, Mr. Michael. Okay, just to conclude, to yes. say that actually we are talking about our continent, our dear continent, Africa. Because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I was trying to, I was in the, on a d debate platform and I said, if we were still being under colonization, we would have been a better continent. <laughs> yeah, th I, mean, I said it. Because we had independence without being prepared, our own brothers have taken over and they are the ones using us. Mm -hmm. When they were the French, when they were the Europeans in Africa, I want to, I am very, very, I mean, I, 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 mean, I want to assume my, my, my comment. There are people when, who not agree, yeah, but... Yeah, of course, when they were the Europeans in Africa, things were straight. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were ruling Africa with their heart and they know that they could give opportunity to everybody in Africa. But unfortunately, our own brothers have taken over the, the continent and things have gone worse. Our own brothers are, I mean, taking, I mean, they concentrate only on their family, on themselves, and then our continent has gone worse. And I want to say that if truly we took this independence in order to actually work for the well-being of our brothers and sisters, I think that we should actually take the independence. New colonialism, yes, we should talk about new colonialism. I don't think that it is something that we have to have to concentrate our intellectuals, our knowledge, and whole one. I mean, to the relationship that we have with Europe today is not as should be a relation on the same platform. That is why today we are talking about globalization. That you give and you take, and that is it. But when it comes to the issue of global, I ask Africa. Africa is just at the consuming end. What are you going to compete with France? What are you going to compete with America? What are you going to compete with, uh, with, what with Britain? What do you produce? What do you produce? And that is where the problem is. Because you cannot produce, because you cannot give. I mean, even the little that you have as uh, the, the natural resources, the, people come there to come and teach and you, tell you, you how much and you tell you how you buy. They set the prices for you. How will you not know, be used? And that is why uh, there's a lot of backbiting. The, the European bring their dollars, or the American, uh, the American bring their dollars, and European bring their euros. They come and buy people to over true government. I mean, because we money is strange to us, we do not know money, and that is what is killing us. I think that we need to reawaken. We need to reassert our identity. Thank you, Mr. Michael. There's another caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to the program. They're indicating to me that we lost that callers. I'm sorry, we are at the end of the program. No more calls. We cannot receive any calls. I want to thank all those who have uh, been really insisting to talk. Even while we're having a uh, special envoy, Regina, talking, they told me there are a lot of people trying to get through to the program. Thank you all for uh, making your voices heard. I want to thank the gentlemen in the studio with me, Mr. Michael, Mr. Abro, and Mr. Tao. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Thanks to the technicians still behind uh, the camera. We have Joel and Michelle, they were behind the camera at the dashboard. We have Ama. And then at the call center, we have Parfait. I mean, Clarice assisted the program today. I want to thank you all. Have a beautiful weekend in the company of our programs on Africa Media. See you next week.